real numbers. You need them every day. It doesn't hurt to know what it is. Suppose you have alphabet, and I will start with the simplest possible alphabet. It has only two symbols, and it will be zero and one. It could be anything. You can take any alphabet you like. The only condition is that it should have not less than two symbols. The size should be larger than two, larger or equal to two. So you have alphabet, and you have some meta symbols. Those meta symbols are I need plus, minus, and uh, decimal point, decimal delimiter. I'll take point for that. So you have alphabet, it could be two symbols, it could be three symbols, it could be ten symbols. The most popular right now in human civilization is uh, ten Arabic uh, symbols from zero to nine. In some other cultures uh, you can observe some other alphabets, but it doesn't matter. You will do the same with all those uh, alphabets. Now, how to construct real numbers? Let's take straight line. And our goal is to create names for each point on the straight line. Each point should get its own unique name based on this alphabet. I will start with point, uh, any point on the straight line. Choose anything you like. And I will call it zero. I spend my first symbol on this point. That's the name of this point. Then I take any other point different from this one and call it 1. Now I have two points. I can measure the distance between them. And I will use this distance to create the third point. Distance between 1 and new comma, new point, is exactly the same as the distance between 0 and 1. And I don't have any more symbols left. That means I need to use combination of those symbols. This point will get name 1, 0. And you keep doing that. The next one is 1, 1. The next one is 1, 0, 0. And so on and so forth. And now I create names for those points. Those numbers are called natural numbers. And they showed up in history, in human hi history, quite uh, at the beginning. So, only ex excluding zero, zero came up uh, later. Now I need to come up with names on the left. For this pur purpose, I you will I will use this meta symbol. This point will get exactly the same name as that one, but with minus up front. That one exactly the same as this one, but with minus up front and so on and so forth. Now I've got all those names, but I still have a lot of gaps. I don't know what happens in between, between 0 and 1, 1 and 1, 0. What, how, what are those points? How can I call those points? How I can create names for those points? In order to do that, I will just look at one particular interval, because they are all the same. If I do it for one, I will do it for any other interval. Let me zoom in interval between 0 and 1 and see what's going on. So I take the interval from 0 to 1. And I will create names for those points in between. On the left, I will know the name of the point. It, wa it is 1. At the right end, I have... Uh, on the left I have 0, on the right I have 1. Now let's see what happens in between. Again, uh, I just want to uh, point out that I have only alphabet of two symbols, 0 and 1. Nothing else, just 0 and 1. That's my alphabet. 
suppose I want to create name for some point here say it sits right there and I want to create its very unique name what I will do I take exactly two uh, I divide this interval in two equal parts why two because I have only two symbols in my alphabet number of parts is equal to the number of symbols I divide interval zero uh, from zero to one into two equal parts right there So I divide it into two equal parts because I have only two symbols in my alphabet. The first part I will call zero. The second part I, I will call one. Now my point sits in the first part. That means the first letter in its name will be zero. Now I take this interval that contains my point and you I divide it into two equal parts again why two because I have only two symbols in my alphabet the first part will get name zero the second part will be one my point sits in the second part that means the next letter in its name is one now I do it again and again okay I will divide this interval into two equal parts the left part is zero the right part is one my point sits in the left part that means the next letter in its name is zero now again i divide this interval into two parts the first part is zero the second is one that means the next letter in the name for this point is zero and now i assume that my point is, is in between when I divide this interval, I hit exactly this point. When I hit this point, I will put one and stop. And I created the name for this point. Uh, if, if for some reason I don't hit the point, never, I mean, I do keep dividing, but I, it's never in, in the middle of the interval, then this sequence, this name will go forever, and my point will have infinite name the length of the name will be infinite it will be infinite sequels of zeros and ones now you know how i can get names for those points that means each point on the interval from zero to one will get exactly unique name which is the sequence of those symbols from this in uh, from this alphabet uh, of course there are special uh, uh, names if you take zero I mean all zeros here that means you take always left interval it will give you the point zero if you have all ones you will take always the right interval interval you will get the point one otherwise in between everything is exactly unique now I created names for points between zero and one now if I want to take any other point say I use blue I take any other point say I decided to take this point and I want its name its name will have the name of the interval the name of the interval for this point is one now I will use my, my meta symbol point and then I take this interval and do exactly the same as I did with interval zero and one and I will get the name for this point whatever it is so this one is the name of the interval one and this one after decimal delimiter the sequence of zero and ones exact constructed in exactly the same way as I did on the interval from zero to one so if I divide by two if it's on the right in the right interval you put one if it's divided by two so if it is on the left put zero it's sort of algorithm you take left, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, and so on and so forth until you get to this point. And now you see how the real numbers are created. Real numbers are basically sequences of a finite alphabet, actually infinite sequences. If I take uh, alphabet with three symbols, I do exactly the same. Nothing new, it's the same idea. Suppose you have alphabet of three symbols, zero, one and two then what you will do how you can create names again you take your uh, straight line you pick arbitrary point 
and that becomes your zero. Then you take the next point, anything different from zero, and this is your one. Measure this distance, add it to the one, and you will get two. Then the next point doesn't have uh, anything. I don't have any symbols, uh, any spare symbols in this alphabet. It means I need to use a uh, combination of the symbols. I take the simplest possible combination, one, zero. And I keep doing that. Uh, to go to the left, I will just add meta symbol minus, and I create minus one, minus two, uh, and so forth, minus uh, one, zero. And I now I came up with the names for any points, uh, so for any natural number, for any points, like uh, equidistance equi from neighbors, right? But I still don't have any names for something in between, but I do exactly the same setup as I did for uh, alphabet zero one. Again, let me, uh, uh, rem uh, let me show how it works for uh, three, uh, for alphabet of three letters. And then you, you will see the general picture. For alphabet of three letters, again, suppose I want to come up with some name for this point. Again, I have three letters in my alphabet. In order to get the name for this guy, I need to divide this interval into three equal parts. Number of parts equal to the number of letters in the alphabet. So it's three equal parts. The first interval will get name zero. The second is one. The third is two. And my point is sitting in the first, very first interval. That means the first na letter in its name is zero. Then I repeat the procedure. I split this interval into three equal parts. The first part is zero, the second part is one, the third one is two. My point sits in uh, the third part, that means the next letter in its name is two. And I keep doing that. If I hit, suppose in this example, in this example looks like I don't hit the point when I divide in three equal parts. But if I hit the point, then I will take, I will take the name of the interval on the right and put it at the end of my sequence and stop. And that's how I create names for the points when I have alphabet of three symbols. Uh, I think you, ge you get already the picture. If I have uh, alphabet of 10 symbols, the one we use right now, then I do exactly the same. I t uh, it's clear what I will do with integers with those points. Uh, but uh, with those discrete points. But what happens in between, uh, I will divide my interval from, suppose I have alphabet of 10 uh, letters. Suppose I have our standard alphabet, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine, that's my alphabet. And I do exactly the same steps. Just let me uh, refresh what I will do I with the interval from zero to one. So I have this interval from zero to one I have now 10 letters in my alphabet and I want to get some name for some point right there. So in order to do that, since I have 10 symbols in my disposal, I can split this interval into, uh, into 10 equal parts. Let's see how many do I have. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I, I can split it into 10 equal parts. One, two, three, four, five. So I think I, I'm doing all wrong. Just let me, I think I need to do, yeah, I need to do like that again. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. So I have ten equal ports. Now each port will get a unique name because I have ten symbols in my alphabet. This one is zero, this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now my point is sitting in this interval. That means the first letter in its name is two. Then I split this interval into ten equal parts, like I did with zero one, and repeat the procedure. I'll get another letter for for, for 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 this point, and I put it here. If I hit this point at some uh, at some step of my division, then I'll take the name of the interval on the right put it here and I completed the name for this point. If I never hit this point, it will go forever and I will construct the name for this point and I it will be infinite sequence of symbols from this alphabet. That's how real numbers are constructed. You see, we have sequences of infinite uh, length. Sometimes you will never hit the point, it will go forever. But there are special sequences those sequences that uh, appear to uh, that are periodic at some point so you have some sequence of uh, symbols that is the name of some point and at some uh, starting at some point here it's some it's some it's starting at some symbol it start repeat itself it's it, it you will get some period you will get some chunk of symbols and then it's keep repeating itself the next one will be actually exactly the same as this one it start repeating itself so if it re if you will get something like that then your sequence is a ratio a ratio of two integers or if your sequence is finite, it's ratio of two integers. It's back and forth. You can prove all periodic or finite sequences are rational numbers. You can prove it. I mean, we will do it later. In order to do complete proof, you need to know little Fermat theorem, little Euler Fermat theorem in order to do that. But the there are quite real sequences that are never repeat itself. It's completely no rule. And those, uh, and majority of those sequences don't have any order, no repeated period. They are not finite, and unfortunately, our digital technology is able to handle only periodic sequences and finite sequences. Even periodic sequences, uh, they generate problems for 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 our digital devices. But it's easy to fix. I'll show you in the next lecture. And we are done with construction of real numbers. If you want to see formal notations, formal uh, definition of real numbers. It was done at the beginning of the previous century, uh, the end of the 19th century, and uh, key persons there, it's Dedekind and uh, Cantor. So this is mostly, my explanation is mostly geared towards, toward Cantor uh, uh, work on real numbers. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching.